You are listening to the Channeling Source Podcast. May what's for the highest good to occur, occur. Hey, Brandon here. You are listening to the Channeling Source Podcast, and this is episode three on abundance and abundance boosting. And we are going to delve into um, four or so main channeled messages, four to five that came through ahead of time from my spirit guides, the angels and source. And this is the topic they wanted me to cover for this episode for whatever reason must just be going around as a topic to focus on, or it'll just be here in the future for those of you who need this episode or felt drawn to it, there will be some information in here that will help you out regarding abundance or regarding your life in general. You know, we'll see what comes through. And again, this is for you who are tuning into this, showing up for it whenever you are, even if it's multiple times and you might uncover multiple layers or messages or things you missed. If you do re-listen, you know, even four to five times or, or more, or just a couple, whatever it is for you. So I don't know why I feel called to say this. Don't be embarrassed or feel embarrassed if you're listening to this like multiple times or you feel called to an episode multiple times on this podcast because it is like channeled so there can be multiple layers to it in the information and there might be things for you in the energetics of the channel messages or the full channel mode sessions as well not from my personal energies of course just from source what comes through me what's in the channel material you get it uh my goal is definitely not to include my personal stuff (laughs) or ego in this uh, at all. My target, I guess, instead of goal. Also, if it matters, I am going to be flowing with just whatever channeled and intuitive information comes through while I'm recording this in addition to what came through ahead of time. So I guess just for your information, that's something that's happening. So here's some general information before we get started, and this might even be or seem unrelated. It's just something I'm getting to talk about here. If you are coming to this and you feel lost and confused right now, something to keep in mind is sometimes that's a really good time to vision for the future and ask yourself, what would you actually like as your life? Or what would you actually like your life to be? be like. And it's a good time to dig into that and then start moving that direction when and as you are called, or it might just be a good time to sit with that. And sometimes that's just a good time to get clarity on like, what would you like in general? And lost, feeling lost and confused doesn't mean you're in the wrong place. It doesn't have to mean that at all. It could just be the precursor to you getting on the right track for you long-term and moving towards where you're supposed to be next, you know? So you could consider it a redirection period or a period where you start to choose your life and choose for your life or look into what would serve you best next. And sometimes you just kind of have to let that be an incubation period where you are, you're healing, you're growing awareness, maybe you're growing, you're shedding some old things, and you're preparing for the future that awaits. And in the right time, when it's time when you're intuitively guided or divinely guided, and you can't always force this, you will move forward. So you will move forward at the right time towards where you're meant to go and towards what you start to vision what you'd like your life to be like, you know? And, you know, sometimes if like we do vision a life that's coming, the way I'm hearing it is more from ego or what we think we'd like. That's not quite what we'd actually like. Like, sure, source, the universe might course correct us. The angels or spirit team might course correct us a little bit. And that's okay. But at least you're starting to get clear on what you'd like. So you have some sort of a destination or target to move towards you know, and when you start moving, if there needs to be course correction, again, your soul, the universe, your spirit team, the angels, source, etc., can redirect you appropriately or give you the proper intuitive information, channeled information, or whatever you need to help you get to what's best for you, I guess you could say, in addition to what you'd like to have. So 
if you are coming to this confused, I'd use this confusion period as a time to recollect yourself and again, vision for the future and maybe even do your best to get clear on what you'd like to have. However that works for you. I remember a similar message came through for one of the one-on-one channeled intuitive readings I facilitated somewhat recently, and I felt called to include that same information. And it's, I, I'm getting that's going to be helpful for a good, like 70% of you to like half of you who will be listening to this. So hope that helps. One more thing before we begin, and I know this might sound obvious, but you are worthy of abundance and prosperity and a good life, and you are deserving of one. Regardless of how things have been up to this point, you have a life that's worth living ahead of you. If you're going to stick with things here, you know, on earth, And there are plenty of opportunities for abundance coming for this crowd is what I'm getting. If you're willing to stick with things, have fortitude in your world for now, if you need to have that, I'm sure some of you have it easy, you know, too, or maybe a lot of you, hopefully. And ease is another topic we could really delve into maybe in one of these episodes. Maybe that'll be the next one, but we'll see. Uh, No promises. (laughs) I just follow my divine guidance on what topics to hit for each episode. They tell me and then they you know, of course, bring through the messages for it as well. So they'd like to get to number one here for the channel messages that came through ahead of time on abundance. Here we go. I'm just going to read this channel message for starters. Abundance is about enjoying your life, not necessarily just about money or one physical thing. It can be tempting to look at it as just a physical thing, but there's so much more to abundance and you have to look at it holistically. And I'm getting this whole thing is a key and they keep showing me a map with this as well. A good way to map your abundance is how are you feeling in your life? Like, how do you feel about your job, your relationships, your maybe even your wonder about being on this planet and joy in being alive. Do you have peace? Do you have a life you'd like to live or do things need to change? And all of this is geared towards bringing you awareness of where you're at right now and where you may be pigeonholing your idea of abundance into just one thing or one thing you're lacking or would like to have. And you might be, because of that, missing out on a lot of great abundance that's all around you currently. So maybe you have a great life and you don't even realize it because you're so mega focused on how you don't have a billion dollars or more in your checking account or whatever, which is I guess, according to some people, a pretty absurd amount to have in just your checking account. But I digress a slight bit amount with that. Nothing wrong with a billion dollars in your checking account, I guess. Anyways, like maybe you have really great relationships around you and your life is one that you enjoy. And maybe you're making 70000 a year instead of hundreds of thousands. However, if you're happy and enjoying your life and have a lot of great energies around you and moments of peace and tranquility. And again, you're living a life you'd like to live. Perfect. That could be very abundant to you. If that aligns with you as far as like what abundance is for you. And maybe it will just take a bit of gratitude and awareness and appreciation to open to the abundance that's already all around you. However, for some of you, maybe even for about half of you, that's a big step towards your abundance is like allowing the abundance you already have and recognizing it and allowing that to fill your perspective instead of just what you're lacking. Easier said than done sometimes, as sometimes it's thrust in our face by society, by marketing, by other people, what we may be lacking sometimes because they want us to buy things. You know, for example, the one that's showing up for me is the beauty industry kind of, I guess does this to men and women, though it does seem like, at least as I'm sitting with this, women tend to 
get hit more directly with this where there's this messaging of like, oh, you're not pretty enough or whatever. Or, oh, you need this makeup so you are worthy of love and have value in the world or something pretty ridiculous like that, even though it's not necessarily true from a source perspective. So I guess one of the things coming to me to be said here for you is like, where are you already abundant and you think you lack abundance, but you don't. And this is definitely not to gaslight you, (laughs) you know, if you really do have an area where you need some help or you're really struggling somewhere, get some help, get some support, look into that, heal what you need to heal, do what you need to do, you know, within reason for the highest good. It's definitely worth digging into that, investigating that, seeing what needs to shift to transform that area or transform things within you to help that area. And maybe that's just going to be part of your work right now regarding abundance is where do you need to heal? Where do you need to shift things? What do you need to allow to transform this? Which might be part of why you're listening to this podcast episode, some of you. (laughs) Maybe some of you are just curious or you're just like, heck yeah, abundance. Let's click on this and listen to this and receive some of that. Heck yeah. Uh, with or without the Southern accent at the end. <laughs> so there were some questions to build awareness around this that came through specifically regarding this first channeled message huh, on the podcast. One, are you enjoying your life? Just to help you gauge this. Do you enjoy your life? Do you love your life or do you honestly think that you hate it or somewhere in between? Just an honest assessment to, I hesitate to use the word diagnose, however, start to get an accurate picture of are you living abundantly or does this area need some help for you? Two, is the energy of your life something you like living in? What needs to change? and this is for your awareness, if you do like channeled writing or you channel for yourself or you do intuitive work, try answering these intuitively, honestly, and see what you get. That could be a really great exercise of awareness for you to look at shifting some of these things, rewiring things for the highest good, you know, to help you out. So sit with that for a second. The third question that came through regarding this, this part here, are you living your truth around abundance or are you trying to fit yourself and your life into someone else's image of abundance for approval or for any other reason? Are you trying to appease your parents with your choices around abundance? Are you trying to live a life that someone else wants for you instead of that you authentically would like for you? Do you even know what abundance is for you or do you need to do some soul searching, some channeling or something to get clear on this? And maybe you can start with what's not abundant for you and ask for something different. You know, if you've had experiences that didn't feel very abundant to you in your life. And just as a reminder, the more you're living in the frequency of abundance and staying there, the more you're an example of abundance in the world for others, the more that abundant frequency is on earth. And in a sense, you're bringing abundance to the world or almost like holding a door open for the highest good for other people to step into abundance. You know, if they are willing to, if they're willing to do the work to do it if it takes work for them to do it, if they're willing to choose it, if they're willing to receive it, etc. So you're actually, in a sense, being a beacon of light in the world, at least regarding abundance or a lighthouse, if you're willing to have abundance and let that aspect of you or your world shine out, you know. And you don't have to shove it in people's faces. You don't have to be like a a salesman of abundance, which is kind of a, a funny thing in a way. You just have to authentically live it and let people see the example and the frequency in your energy fields and in your world, et cetera. So I I guess I'll, you know, not rephrase the question, but repeat it one more time. Are you living your truth around abundance authentically and what's like actually abundant for you? 
one thing that keeps popping into my head that I feel called to really reiterate is the line in the channeled paragraph where my spirit guides, the angels and source said something about looking at abundance holistically for you. And like, as far as like what the energy of your life is and not just one physical thing or idea of abundance. And that physical thing or idea might really tie into your holistic big picture of abundance. For example, money. Money could absolutely tie into your big full picture look or concept of abundance. We're actually going to tackle that next. Money was one of the topics that they wanted to get to for this. So number two, and this is a paragraph I'm reading that channeled through. So fully for that is good. There is nothing wrong with money. Money abundance can be conducive to you living a life of ease and plenty and can be part of the picture of your abundance. If you are withholding money from yourself, you are withholding abundance from yourself. They would like me to repeat that one. If you are withholding money from yourself, you are withholding abundance from yourself. Now, what that does not mean is if you had a high paying job where you were miserable and you took a lesser paying job that you are withholding abundance from yourself, like a lesser lesser paying job that you're happy with and you feel good in your life. That could be more abundant for you if you are making enough financially to really sustain yourself in your world, at least relatively comfortably, I would argue probably fully comfortably. (laughs) However, if you're, again, making like 70K a year, I guess USD or whatever a solid income would be for you wherever you are at in the world with the cost of living in the area you're in, et cetera. And it's it's passable and it's more than enough. It's Maybe it's not like absurdly wealthy financially, but you're really loving your life. You love your work. You love the people around you. You love the energy of your life. That could be very abundant, of course, compared to someone who has billions of dollars, but they're bankrupt with their heart energy, with their hearts, with the people around them. They don't really enjoy their world. They're kind of lost in misery, even though they have a lot of money. Again, you have to look at it holistically with all this. However, what this is more referring to with the withholding money from yourself is like maybe if you make 30K a year and you think money is evil and you just like spend it all or give it all away or you don't allow yourself to receive more or start a business that makes more money or charge people enough for your work. If you do some type of business or something where you're charging enough for your work because you're, you feel like it's wrong because there's other people struggling in the world or something like that. You're actually not really receiving is what I'd say. And you're withholding opportunity from yourself. And you're actually kind of withholding potentially a more ease filled life And even like a life where you're in a better position to help other people and be in a solid good place while you do so and not have to worry and stress about money so much. So you're kind of withholding ease, uh, even some like lightness, maybe even joy from yourself. And I say joy and maybe even peace because if you are constantly stressed about money, you're probably not in as much joy and peace as you could be because you're constantly stressed about money or rather the lack of money if you are withholding money from yourself to a certain extent as long as you live in any type of capitalist society or setting for the most part unless you have some sort of a commune or you live out in nature where you just hunt and gather for your food or or something like that abundance could mean something a little bit different so they're urging me to kind of move on to the rest of this paragraph here so here's what else they brought through In the last sentence, they said, again, if you are withholding money from yourself, you are withholding abundance from yourself and continued. We don't care about your stories of money being evil, money being wrong, or how your mom or other figure, religious, authoritative, or otherwise yelled at you about money or made you wrong for it. It doesn't actually make money wrong. That's just other people's projections, stories, judgments, or maybe they were made wrong for it. So then they turn around and try to make other people wrong with it or for it, excuse me, as a way to try to be right or to try to separate from it so they're not made more wrong by other people could could have been from a traumatic thing or not i know people just kind of do those kind of weird things sometimes so 
This is really asking you to look at your stories around money and what have you been sold about money. And money doesn't really have to be a good or bad thing. One of the things that's been helpful for me that I've heard from people regarding money, and there are multiple things, but it's what's showing up now is like money is a neutral energy. It's not necessarily good. It's not necessarily bad. So if it's a neutral energy, why would you withhold something that could really help you out, make your world better, maybe even help you help the world in a greater way if you had millions of dollars to contribute to a a project you wanted to contribute to or to donate to a cause you really care about that's in a way that's effective, you know, for the world? Why would you withhold a neutral thing that's not evil, not bad, that you could use to help the world and yourself have a better life. It kind of turns into almost madness in a sense. (laughs) Maybe not that you're literally insane, but the concept is insane. If you're withholding a, a tool that could help you help your world because of the false stories of others, you know, that maybe you were bludgeoned with or you bought into for whatever reason, now's a great time to shed that and look at what's true for you around money so you can have a better reality and world for yourself with money. And let's look a little bit deeper into money as a tool. Like it's not right. It's not wrong. It's just something you can wield in the world. Kind of like in uh there was like a fantasy novel I read one time and the, the author made a pretty big deal about a character who wielded a hammer. It was the wheel of time series. If you had to know, I loved that when I was like 12 through, you know, my teenage years and maybe my early twenties as well. And there was one character who wielded like a, a hammer in battle. And the again, there was this whole thing of like, well, you can use the hammer to build and make the world a better place and help people. Or you can use the hammer to destroy and kill and da 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 And it's what if money, I've heard other people talk about this, what if money is a similar thing or the same way where the people who make the world a worse place with money, that's them using the hammer to destroy instead of build, you can pick up the hammer and do or choose something entirely different. Kind of like you can use a chef's knife to cut a delicious, cut a delicious meal, you know, chop food and prepare a delicious meal that's nourishing to people and maybe even healing to people. Or you could use it to like stab someone. So, which I I don't condone, by the way, (laughs) necessarily, (laughs) obviously. So how would you wield money if you had money? Another thing that's coming to me to be talked about is I think a lot of people can relate to this where we have examples of people who have something and they are a particular way that we would like to be free from being. And so we get into this weird dance of like, oh, I'd like to have this thing. However, this person had this thing and they were like this and this thing that I didn't like or it seemed harmful to people. If I have this thing that they had too, will I become like them? Well, the answer is no, obviously. You could look at this as far as, in abundance, again, it doesn't have to be with money. This could be about like a social media following. Like you see someone who has a big following, but they're always maybe they're using it in a way that's harmful to people or it's spreading misinformation or it's just not the truth. And you're afraid that if you have a big following too, even though you'd really like to have it, you will become like them. You'll probably just become more of who you are with that thing. Or you can look at what you're already doing with the level you have it at. You know, for example, like if you have a social media following, are the, depending on how big it is, are you helping authentically the people who follow you at the scale you're at now? If you are, as long as you stay in your integrity and keep, you know, working with an intention to do what's for the highest good and help people, you'll probably just do more of that at a greater scale. If you have a a larger audience and you'll have more power potentially to influence the world, at least on a physical level through all that. So maybe it would be a really great thing for the world if you were to move towards that, regardless of how other people at that level of abundance, if you will, or that level of having an audience, you know, that scale played it, you can play it differently through the way you use that tool, the hammer, the money, the influence, whatever it is. So I guess it also begs the question, like, how are you judging money? That's kind of part of what this is about here. Like, are you judging it as bad based on the stories you've heard as a kid or the religious quote, or maybe even not religious quotes, but quotes from people who were religious, (laughs) which can be two different things. 
Because if you're constantly judging money as bad or evil and you're constantly judging people who have money as bad or evil or corrupt or inept or assuming they did bad things to have money or whatever, are you going to be more likely to move towards having money? Are you going to be more likely to do the things you need to do to have more money? Or are you going to do everything you can to separate from it and not have it so you're not those bad things? Probably the latter. And I'm also not, again, I'm not telling you to judge money as good. You can dig into this and see what's true for you. And what's true for you probably isn't that money is bad. I'm going to get into this other perspective too. I was listening to a video about money and the person facilitating this video talked about how, you know, money originally came about as a means of facilitating trade, potentially with greater ease. So instead of you having to, you know, like, let's say you're a shoemaker, you know, trade your shoes that you make for grain, you can just sell your shoes and take the money you earn from that and then buy grain instead of, you know, if the grain person doesn't want shoes, then you'd have to go, you know, maybe to the town over, or you, maybe you'd just be out of luck, you know, if you couldn't find a way to somehow turn those shoes you made into grain. So is, I guess the question is if, if money is just a way to facilitate trade with greater ease, if that's part of what it is and it's, you know, trading for things isn't necessarily evil, is it? So just having a different conduit of trade or an easier way to facilitate trade probably isn't evil either. It's just another way to trade and make everyone's life better. If you'll think of it that way. And some of you might be feeling a little hot under the collar because it's really testing your beliefs. I would say good at least you're considering something different instead of staying stuck in, maybe even stuck in a position that's been sticking you in your world regarding abundance or money. So, and if I'm pissing you off or making you mad, good. <laughs> at least you're considering something that's helping you. And I'm also not here just to validate you as right all the time or, or coddle your feelings necessarily. I'm here to bring through what's true and helpful and for the highest good. So it might be uncomfortable sometimes if, this might not be the exact way it's happening, but shedding light on something you didn't want to see or it's getting you to consider something differently or it's testing your beliefs or your worldview. And of course, I'd like to be tactful and do it in a way that's harmonic. I realize that doesn't always totally protect people from being triggered. So that's, it is what it is. So I'm going to read through the questions that my spirit guides, the angels and source brought through regarding this portion here for you to consider and maybe answer intuitively or channel on it, see what you get. Are you willing to have the money that would support the life you'd like to have? If you are not, then you aren't living in abundance. I know some of you are going to hate that. <laughs> I'll reread it. Are you willing to have the money that would support the life you'd like to have. If you aren't, then you aren't living in abundance, at least not as much as you could. So long as you live in a capitalistic society where you need money to eat or need money to uh, get things like entertainment or clothing or other things you need to survive, you're probably not living in abundance if you're not allowing yourself to have money. Next question, are you willing to overcome the judgments of others in order to have the money you'd like to have? You know, like we talked about earlier, some people will judge the heck out of people who have money. It is what it is. People will project all over it. People will just be mad, even if the person who has the money worked really hard for it or went through just a ton of crap to change their life and work on themselves and get to the place where they had money. People will just still be jealous and mad and weird. And, you know, there's also, I'd like you to consider nothing wrong with people having a lot of money with these. There's not necessarily anything lesser about those people or wrong with them. If they have a big trust fund, for example, a lot of people like to rag on the trust fund kid or 
whatever. Or, you know, there's all those comments on social media, like people who have daddy's money to get them the guitar or the car or the whatever. And, you know, wouldn't you like to have money with these? Like maybe we don't need to judge those people and withhold us having money with these from ourselves potentially. (laughs) So I'll read this question again. Are you willing to overcome the judgments of others in order to have the money and maybe even the life you'd like to have? And if not, are you willing to look at that and change that? Or what can you do to change that if you'd like to, so that you are, so that you can potentially have it? The other thing that just kind of hit me as I was sitting with this is it kind of goes back to the first episode a little bit, maybe. You know, if you're living your life or withholding your abundance based on what other people will think or judge, you're kind of letting them control you. You're letting their egos control you. You're letting their judgments and their thoughts and projections control you. And that's actually not a healthy place to be, nor is it an empowered place to be if you're living according to the whims, stories, which might not even be true, by the way, judgments of others. Like, think about it. Someone's projection or judgment of you could be something they inherited from their parents because their parents really judged that thing. And so if they didn't do any type of work with their self-awareness and they just saw their parents judging something and they're like, oh, that's something we judge and I'd like my mom to like me or be on my side. So I'm going to judge that too. And that way, you know, I'm not going against the the tribe so I won't be kicked out of the tribe and I'll have someone who will, you know, give food to me and, and emotional support to me or, or whatever. And so I'm going to judge that too. And, (laughs) you know, that's not necessarily the truth of the situation. It was just like a survival mode kind of thing or like a tribe mentality kind of thing. So, and you know, that parent might've got that from a religious institute or it might've got that from their parents or a friend they had, or maybe they were just feeling mad one day and said it really vehemently and it became a maybe even a a trauma for the person who's regurgitating that judgment or mirroring it or making it their own in some way. So it could even come about from something really silly where the person judging you, it's not even like their judgment and like you're still letting it control you, you know? And I'm saying all this so maybe you can let it go and let yourself be beyond the control that others might be imposing wittingly or unwittingly sort of through their judgments and the things they say, the thoughts they share, their opinions, et cetera. And I think something that can really help us is getting clear on what sources perspective is on things or your spirit guides or the angels or your intuitions perspective on like what's true instead of, again, living according to judgment, which is, a fast track to really not living in truth, I guess you could say. So let's get to number three, and this is going to hit on something that I think can be really common for people around abundance. I know I have brushed up against this in the past for sure, which is kind of about, you know, not hurting other people's feelings by being abundant or having something when they don't. And maybe that in and of itself is because we were punished in some way in the past by someone, by a parent for having some type of circumstance like that, or people got really mean towards us or, or jealous and envious and attacking towards us in some way, whether it was underhanded or very confrontational in our faces. So maybe there's some trauma depending on the situation to unearth and unpack regarding that. If that's part of what's spiking or, you know, maybe it's a, uh, a past life thing that's coming up to be healed for you if it's acute and you're not sure where it's coming from. And there's ways to heal that as well. You might have to look into energy healing and and things like that to start to tackle or some form of modality or healing to help you out. However, just something to be aware of, I guess you could say. Number three, here's what came through. So fully fly is good. Are you willing to have abundance even if others don't seem to be doing well? Your life is not the same as others. Abundance can be different for each person as it does have to do with the energy of your life and what you'd like to live. 
So it is difficult to compare your abundance to others if you do not realize what is actually abundant to them. Thus, comparing your abundance to another's is a trap in most cases that can keep you constricted. Every person on earth has the capability to make choices that will make their life better and more how they'd like it to be. Just because someone else isn't actively choosing their life that they would like doesn't mean you shouldn't, even if they don't like you for it, even though they're the ones who have the responsibility to choose for themselves and their life, and they're the ones actively not choosing abundance or moving towards abundance for themselves. Even in extreme cases with people who lack abundance, such as those who live in poverty or countries that are difficult to build wealth in, those with major health issues, etc., your circumstances are different and to limit your choices to what they have is to limit the world, your abundance, and even the potential of others. You are not helping people if you stay at their level. You're just drowning yourself. If you'd like to help them get abundant and then help them from a solid place as you can within reason and as you are guided, drowning with everyone else does not help them. And regarding that last paragraph, I feel like we're gonna have to go back and <laughs> delve into this a bit more. If so, here's an example, you know, regarding that last bit here. So, you know, maybe there's someone who asked to live in a wheelchair for some reason in their life. If every single person on earth then decided, oh, we can't be greater than that. We all just have to live in wheelchairs now because of this one person. So if everyone on earth decided to live in a wheelchair just because one person needed a wheelchair, it would severely limit what was possible on earth for all people. And it might not even be fair to the people who didn't need a wheelchair. So if everyone decided to like jump into a pool and drown on purpose just because someone else was drowning or someone else drowned, the world would be over. You know, humanity would be extinct. We'd all be dead. There'd be no any of this. <laughs> so limiting yourself because of someone else's alleged limitations does not help the world. And, you know, my guide said this might be a tough truth for some of you to hear or maybe all of you. It's just kind of that example. We talked about it earlier where, I mean, if you're allowing your abundance and to, allowing yourself to be abundant, you'll be in a better place to help these people anyhow, and you'll be in a better place to be an advocate for those people if you're called to be an advocate for these people who are, who are drowning or who need help. And it's much easier to throw the rope from shore and pull someone who's drowning in than it is to jump into the water with them and drown with them and try to, you know, get them to safety you hear all the time about how when you jump in the water to drown with someone, sometimes, that's not the exact way to say it. If you jump into the water to save someone who's drowning, sometimes they'll just like, you know, if they're panicking, they'll just grab onto you and drag you both down and you both end up drowning instead of, you know, you being in a solid place, throwing like a lifesaver or a rope and pulling them in from the sturdy, solid place that you're in. I hope you're kind of starting to catch on though to this idea of like, limiting yourself or keeping yourself at a worse spot for other people or even their feelings, even if they don't seem to have the same opportunities as you, it, it doesn't necessarily help them. It doesn't necessarily help the world be a more abundant place with more opportunity for everyone. It just kind of like if everyone started to do that, it would just constrict things. And again, it would limit the possibilities on earth. So try not to drown yourself for others. And we talked about it earlier. If you have more abundance, there's potentially you're a lighthouse for others. They can see that possibility. They can start to choose it. They can start to swim towards it. And you have more of an abundance frequency in the world if you have more abundance running through your world. You kind of become an ambassador of abundance. I'm borrowing from Lee Harris a bit on that one. Uh, he does have an abundance course that I'd recommend if this is a topic you'd like to go deeper with. Uh, no affiliation, by the way. Just kind of consider that, I guess. All right, I'm going to get into something that might be triggering for some of you, and then we're going to potentially go back and dissect a bit more of this and see what I'm guided to bring through, because there's a lot that kind of came through ahead of time. I just read through uh, a few paragraphs here. So if you're one of those people who is like going to the worst possible scenarios and getting mad at me for what I was just saying as I was talking about, like the wheelchair, for example, for, yeah, the wheel wheelchair example, for example... Ooh, this one might be a little bit brutal, but I'm just going to read it here. So if you're listening to me and you're like really fighting me on that and like fighting me saying that it's okay for you to have abundance, you know, 
consider this. Like, how would it go if you sold all your possessions, gave up your job or income to go live on the street and join the people in the worst circumstances? And then please tell me how that makes the world a better place. And tell me if everyone did that, how it would make the world a better place. And then tell me and show me how you're going, you know, how you're helping them instead of just adding more poverty and unabundance to the world. And then try to tell me and show me how it improves the world. It doesn't necessarily. It just limits the abundance in the world. It puts you in a worse place, puts you in a place where it's more difficult for you to impact the world in a meaningful way for the highest good or even help the other people that you might have been doing it to ostensibly help. It also just like, in theory, disempowers you in your life at least a bit or it does. Like your frequency impacts the all and your frequency of abundance impacts the all. So I'm getting now you get it. So if you weren't getting it before, hopefully that starts to paint the picture. I know for me, energetically, I was really seeing it pretty clearly as I was typing through that paragraph, as that channeled through, I'm hearing to say. So let's dissect this a little bit more. And again, I didn't like mean or intend to make you angry. I'm just looking at helping you change your perspective so you'll allow more abundance, honestly, and consider how it might be even not literally insane, but a little bit insane sort of to limit your abundance for other people. So let's dig into this a little bit more deeply. And I'm going to maybe talk about some stories around this as well, or experiences I'm guided to talk about. So the first paragraph here, are you willing to have abundance even if others don't seem to be doing well? Your life is not the same as others. Abundance can be different for each person as it does have to do with the energy of your life and what you'd like to live. So it is difficult to compare your abundance to others if you do not realize what is actually abundant to them. Thus, comparing your abundance to another's is a trap in most cases that can keep you constricted. One of the examples that keeps coming to me is there might be someone who gets really bored easily. So a fast-paced life with like a business they own where they're doing a bunch of things, wearing a bunch of hats, they might really enjoy that and that might fill them up and bring them peace and contentment and fulfillment, you know, and that could be really abundant to them. However, to another person, that could be like a a personal hell compared to, you know, if they lived out in the country with a slow pace of life and they could really just take their time with things, they could take things at their leisure, they could spend hours outside on the porch drinking a coffee or beverage of their choice, et cetera. They could, you know, take a lot of days off. They didn't have to work a lot or very hard or fast. That could be their heaven. However, that could be the personal hell of the person who liked the fast paced lifestyle where they're doing a lot of things and wearing a bunch of hats and, you know, impacting a world in a way they would like to impact the world. Everyone can be potentially different with this. So it's important not to judge another's world is abundant or unabundant if you aren't sure what abundance is for them or you don't realize what it is for them. So that's kind of why it can be difficult to compare. There's another angle I'm going to talk about this general idea with or from. And I don't necessarily like this topic in an, in its entirety, what I'm about to talk about. However, it does kind of paint a picture that might be helpful with this. There was one time in my life potentially a few years ago where, and I was doing a lot of channeling and intuition and I had like the energy healing thing. And I also wasn't making like a ton of money. I was living, you know? Uh, And I saw someone who had a YouTube channel or something and they had a job that they were doing through this YouTube channel where they made a lot of money. And then you could see another video where, uh, this person had their their partner and they seemed relatively attractive and they lived in this place that cost like 10000 a month or something like that. And you're like, oh, that looks so nice. And they just post these videos and they blow up to million, tens of millions of views and they have this income that comes in and they have this partner that looks this specific way. And oh, they have this opportunity over here and I'll look at this video. And it was so interesting. There was a part of me that went like, at that time, like, oh, I'd like to have that. And I kind of looked at everything I had and almost just like looked at some of the challenges I had, looked at some of the things I was like, "Ah, I don't know about this. (laughs) Not necessarily a bad thing in and of itself. I just, in this instance, I might've gone a bit too far. 
I was at the same time taking a course. I believe it was the initiation course that Lee Harris was putting on. And in one of the channeled videos after this happened, and sometimes when I take like channel courses or watch readings, I'm, I'm really getting, I've gotten a lot better at just trust. Not that I wasn't, I was guided to take this one. However, sometimes when you're on like taking a course or you're watching a bunch of readings and it talks about a certain topic, depending on your circumstances, you might go through some of the things that are talked about so that you kind of get a learning out of it or you elevate yourself somehow and you're kind of going through a healing with the things that come up in your life that are, you know, similar to what is talked about or related to what is talked about in that course you take or the reading you watch, etc potentially especially with things that have to do with like spiritual healing or, or energy healing or have a bit of magic to them or a lot of magic to them. And long story short, what started to happen and the course talked about this as well was I started to feel just what it would be like if my life actually were like the individual that I'd seen on YouTube, if I actually had their life and circumstances and in the course, what Lee Harris's guides called it was like an energy field transplant, which sounded a bit extreme and there's ways to just undo it, you know, really quickly. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a thing or like a permanent thing or anything crazy like that. Uh, however, when I would start to feel that like things felt really dull to me when usually my life felt very vibrant and maybe exciting and full of life and things felt boring to me and like I felt boring and dull and it, it wasn't actually the experience of that person's life uh, from their internal world, from their, their, the energy of their life, it actually wasn't better than mine at all. In fact, for me, it was a lot worse <laughs> than what I had, even though I didn't have as many views on social media or as much money coming in, or, you know, I think at the time I was, I was single. So it was so fascinating that even though this person on paper had so many of the things that I thought I wanted, if the energy of my life wasn't at least as good or better than what I already had, it wasn't actually abundant to me. It was actually less abundant to me. And so I guess two things, do your best not to look at what someone else has and go like, oh, I want that. Oh, I need that. Oh, I wish I were them instead of me and just give up on your life and your circumstances because you might have a lot of great things or like the way your life feels or the energy of your life might be a lot better compared to other people's than you realize it is, even if they have certain physical things that you think you would like, you know? So that's one thing to consider with this. Do I think it's possible to have all the physical things you'd like to have and have the energy of your life be super amazing and your life is full of ease and joy and your dreams have come true and it's magical and it's awesome and you have it all in the best ways for you? Yes, 100%. And I fully encourage you to call that in and ask for that. And maybe it can show up with ease right away. Maybe there's some healing you need to be kind of moved through before you're in a place to hold that, receive that, have that in your life. We could talk about that in a second, though this episode is starting to get a little bit long here. I just wanted to talk about that story, though, because it really emphasizes something that maybe we don't think about when we talk about abundance and looking at what others have, looking at what we have, et cetera. Let's dissect the second paragraph a little bit from this portion here. Every person on earth has the capability to make choices that will make their life better and more how they'd like it to be. Just because someone else isn't actively choosing their life they would like or their abundance doesn't mean you shouldn't, even if they don't like you for it, even though they're the ones who have the responsibility to choose for themselves and their life, and they're the ones actively not choosing abundance or actively choosing not to move towards abundance for themselves. So we each have choices every day and how we show up. And just because you put in the work and work towards your abundance, dug into your beliefs, did the healing around it, or put in the work to build a business or something like that, and like someone else didn't, and they're mad at you because you have this thing and they don't, they had, most people in the world have the opportunity to choose differently for themselves every freaking day. They can build skills that would allow them to get a job that makes them more money. They can build a business. They can learn the skills that would help them build a successful business. They have the choice and the capability. Are they choosing it 
Are they doing the work to even realize they have that choice and they can choose their life? Are they sifting through going beyond the judgments of others to choose like the life they'd like to have? Regardless of whether they are or not, they have that choice. So just because you're using your time differently, uh, just because you're actually making the choices to have abundance, it, that definitely doesn't make you a bad person even if they think it does because they don't have what you have, even if, they, if the, even if they didn't do like the work to have it <laughs> or whatever, it's like, it, it just gets really silly to me seeing how people will just be so mad that someone else has something, but that person who's mad about it isn't willing to just do the work or make the choices to have what they'd like to have as well. So again, you're actually kind of helping those people and opening the door to possibility for them. If you're showing them like, Hey, it's possible to have this thing. And if they're mad at you because they're not willing to choose it for some reason and they're choosing to be a victim in their life instead of choosing what it takes to be empowered and make their life better, that's nothing wrong with you. You know, that's all on them and their projections and their judgments are all on them. So don't limit yourself for anyone else regarding their stories with all that. They potentially have just as much opportunity as you do every day. And sure, you could argue some people might have more distance to go to get themselves out of certain constricted circumstances. They are probably the ones, depending, I know there's different like people in the world with different things going on and different countries with different circumstances. Like I get all that. At the same time, sometimes people's constricted circumstances, they chose that for themselves through their series of choices in life. Just like a lot of where you're at has to do with the choices you made in your life up to this point. And sure, you could argue that there's still divine orchestration, there's manifestation, which manifestation could be a choice. You know, if you're honing in your manifestation and your potency and your ability to manifest, I mean, that's <laughs> taking the steps towards being able to have what you'd like to have in a sense. However, like, yeah, you can argue there's like destiny and things we're meant for uh, in addition to that. And that holds true as well. However, what are they doing with the choice that they do have? What are you doing with the choice that you have, by the way, <laughs> as an exercise of awareness to get you to, you know, look at, sorry, I'm, I'm saying this weird, as something you could look at to see if you're making the choices that will get you to where you'd like to go um, as well. I guess you could look at this both ways. The third paragraph, so then we, of course, delved into a lot of the more extreme circumstances. We already talked about that, so I won't beat a dead horse with that. And let's move to number four, otherwise this is going to get long AF. It's going to be a long boy, B-O-I boy. So number four, the fourth channel message that came through for this might be something we've already kind of talked about, about, excuse me. Here we go. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself about what you're willing to have. Be honest with yourself about what actually feels abundant to you. Be honest with yourself about what you actually would like. It might not be what society tells you, it might also align with what society tells you more than you realize. Don't judge yourself for what you'd like. Don't judge yourself for desiring abundance. Having abundance is going to entail you being honest with yourself. I guess this could kind of go with like anything. Like, are you honest with yourself and what regarding what you'd like with a partner in a relationship? Even as far as like, what are you attracted to? What kind of things are you willing to put up with or not put up with? You know, you could look at almost any area with this. However, being honest with yourself is going to be like one of the first steps. It sounds a little bit rudimentary or maybe even, you know, elementary. And in some ways it kind of is. However, it's like an important step that people miss sometimes. <laughs> like they'll just be like, this is a weird example. Like they'll be like, I want an expensive John Deere tractor for my backyard for the projects. And they won't even like ask themselves like why, or like, what's the reason for that? Or like, they won't even be honest with themselves of like, what's the influence that's causing them to desire that is like an authentic thing. Is it just because their dad had one? They want to be like their dad. Is it just because the neighbors all have John Deere tractors that are expensive in their backyard to dig holes and 
build forts for their children or whatever. And it's kind of a weird example I'm pulling out of my butt, but you could apply this to like a particular kind of car you'd like to have. And if you're like honest with yourself and you're like, no, this is actually going to give me an experience I'd really like to have, or intuitively like, no, this is just what my soul is telling me to move towards or to, to try to have, or to manifest next, do it. Like that's, that's awesome. You know, and there's something in that for you. And part of being honest with yourself is even maybe even allowing the desires you have that you or others would judge. So like a sports car, like maybe you'd be like, oh, but all the spiritual people, they say the physical is stupid and we shouldn't want things like this. Da, 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 da. And it's like, well, if that's something you're genuinely, honestly do desire and you check in with your soul and your divine guidance, and the angels are like, yeah, that's a great thing to manifest for you. And maybe you'll get the reason for it. It'll heal this thing in your childhood or it will give you this awareness or whatever it is, like that's okay. Like you, again, like we talk so much about not judging it and not judging things like kind of same here, you know, I think sometimes people really restrict themselves from abundance and how good their life can be, even with like different topics that seem more spiritual. So for example, like there are beliefs out there where people think that if they're a healer, they can't have money because it's not spiritual. Like who decides what's not spiritual? Like that's such a human judgment. <laughs> that's not really checking in, checking in with like your divine guidance, with source, with the angels, with your intuition. Be like, oh, is that true? That it's not spiritual to have money or to be wealthy. Is it true that I have to suffer and, you know, barely make ends meet if I'm a healer or be a starving artist or whatever, a starving healer? And you'll get no, you know, if you check in on that with source or with your intuition, because it's just, it's just not true. That's like a human story, judgment, projection. So we kind of stick ourselves sometimes, even with like spiritual things, when we like just buy that belief outright and be like, oh, I'm trying to be spiritual or I, I identify as spiritual. So I have to fit into this box that other people consider spiritual, except, oh wait, this group over here has a different definition of what's considered spiritual. So I have to squeeze myself into that and both boxes, oh no, the boxes conflict. They're saying opposite things. And now I have to try to squeeze myself into both definitions and you know, <laughs> it just becomes this really limiting thing, which is kind of the opposite of abundance, you know, all that limitation and probably sounds like a personal hell, maybe even to at least some of you to just try to squeeze yourself into living your life into a way others judge as correct, even according to an ostensibly spiritual paradigm, which just kind of actually now that I'm talking about it, it just seems like some random dude who identifies as spiritual and then projects on it and has an opinion about it, which isn't necessarily even spiritual. It's just some dude's <laughs> opinion. <laughs> it just gets it just gets sillier the more I talk about it, honestly. <laughs> or it just seems sillier the more I talk about it, the whole uh, judgment and squeezing yourself into a quote-unquote spiritual box. And you know, being honest with yourself also entails being honest with yourself about the things you would like to be free from. Would you like to be free from even things that other people might typically desire? Would you like to be free from, you know, living in a city? Would you like to be free from living in the country? Would you like to be free from monogamy? Would you like to be free from polygamy? You know, whatever the thing is, it's pretty just good to be really honest with yourself and be vulner vulnerable with yourself around those things. And you can just write these things down when you sit with them and they can just be for you. You don't have to show anyone or tell anyone, even if you're afraid like, oh, my mom would judge me for wanting this or, oh, my friend would be so mad if I said that I wanted this out loud. Like, you don't have to tell people, but at least get clear on it for you and begin to see if crafting your life to entail those things feels right, excuse me, to you as you move towards them. And you're probably going to be more abundant if you do that. Actually, my spirit guys are clarifying, like you are going to be more abundant if you do that. And even if you start moving towards something that you think you want, and it's just not exactly what you wanted, that's great information for crafting your future and next steps. And that's a great, I mean, you're refining your vision and what you'd like to have. And, you know, plenty of people out there make mistakes when they're working on crafting their life. So don't beat up on yourself. Just take it as a course correction or 
information that you have now and experience you have now and wisdom that you have now that you can utilize to craft a life you'd actually like to have, of course. So next thing I'm going to delve into, there were just some ideas as far as like ways to increase or work on your abundance besides what we just talked about here, what came through for you here intuitively channeled wise or things I just felt called to talk about from my own experiences. So there are a number of ways and you might have to see what fits for you and feels right for you. One, you know, you can look at shifting your beliefs around abundance. And you can do this if you channel for yourself or work with your intuition. It can be easier to delve into this. You can be like, okay, spirit guides, sit down with a piece of paper. Like, what are my beliefs around abundance? And you could even go further. Like, what are the beliefs around abundance I need to shift? And just receive what you get, you know, and, and write it down and look at it. And then once you see the beliefs, you can start to do energy healing on it in some way or you can manifest the beliefs changing, or you can do whatever exercises resonate for you as a way to shift your beliefs. So one of the examples I have for this, it was about my beliefs around money. And I sat down and I channeled, okay, okay like what are my beliefs around money? And then, I, ooh, <laughs> it's not the case anymore. I just remember hearing and then writing down like money is difficult. I'm like, ooh, uh, it's difficult to have money. It's difficult to make money. I'm like, ooh, uh. and like, you'll get the honest look at this, but when you get the true, like, look at it, you can shift it, you know, and start to change it or do the work to change it. And so when I looked at my life, I was like, yeah, you know, I keep like doing these things for money, but it's like just such a chore for me. Like it puts me through like all this stuff that I, I go through to, you know, put this thing into place. And like, I keep like, feel like I'm going through other people's energies as I do this thing for money and it's really difficult for me and I don't really make as much as is worth it for that thing that I'm, you know, doing and putting myself through. And it, you know, in some ways, like it's just a different difficulty around that than, you know, maybe when I worked for a retail shop and I was busting my butt and just getting paid like $12 an hour for it or whatever, you know, back in, way back in the day it was just kind of like that money is difficult, took a different form. So by reworking the belief, you know, underneath it, I was able to shift my reality around it is one way to go about it. So consider that, consider digging into like, what are your beliefs around money? What are your beliefs around abundance? And like, it could be like a worthiness thing that pops up. It could be a deservingness thing. It could be like a, oh, I can't have this because my mom or whatever. And once you see it and you realize that doesn't have to be true for you and it probably isn't true, it's just a belief, you can start to, again, shift it. Um, in some ways, I, I hesitate to put this out there, however, because uh, I'll just mention it. Like one modality you could look at is access consciousness. I'm not sure how far I'd recommend you go with it. There are some really good tools and things you can look at that can help shift beliefs and shift things around judgments and projections and things like that. I'm kind of a little bit wary of uh, the people at the top, you know, maybe regarding integrity and certain things like that. However, there are still good things to be mined from it if you feel called to that. You can also just use like other energy healing like Reiki to facilitate a session around your beliefs if you get clear around your beliefs and like just ask that the Reiki shifts your beliefs for the highest good and maybe show up every day and do a 15 minute session or do a longer one, you know, until you start to check in and be like, okay, has this shifted yet? Or how are we doing with this? Um, et cetera. And there's other modalities and ways. So, you know, maybe look into it and see what calls to you as a ways to shift this. If you go about it that way, maybe even just channeling for yourself, uh, could start to shift it as well energetically or just through getting clarity on it. Or sometimes even just becoming aware of things starts to shift things all on its own as well. So don't discount your own awareness on when it comes to shifting things like this. So of course, some of the things you can also look at are just letting go of your judgments around abundance or the judgments you bought from other people around abundance. This is also something you could channel on or look into and find ways to let go of the judgments or put your awareness on it until the judgment dissolves or use energy healing to clear the judgments around it, whether it's access consciousness or some other tool or modality that you have in your tool belt. That's something you can look at. So the third one, when it comes to like manifesting abundance, getting in the energy of abundance every day is something to consider. So one of the resources they're having me recommend for you with this one that I really think 
talks about this really well. It's from a book called Energy Speaks by Lee Harris, of course. And I think it's page 79, unless there's like a different edition of the book out that has different things on different pages. There's this exercise on living in abundance or yeah, living in like total abundance or something like that. And in the exercise, you pretty much get the energy of like what it would be like to have total abundance and everything's in place in these different areas of your life that can be pretty all encompassing. And then you just sit in that energy and you'll probably feel the energy around you because you can get the another way to look at this. You can get any energy from source and just feel what it would be like if things were a certain way. So, or you could just get the energy of it in different ways too. If you consider maybe it all exists so you can get the energy of anything at any time. But you get the like energy of what it would be like to be in that total abundance and you sit in it and you can either meditate in it or just hold that energy around you and consider it. And you'll probably feel a lot of joy, a lot of lightness, a lot of space. Like you, your body might respond to the energy and like you'll, as a, as a, intu in an intuitive way, your body might just like smile. Like you might just find yourself smiling or like laughing or giggling to yourself or it just feels like, a, like it's like, um, trying to get the right words here, elating maybe, like you're just in complete elation and bliss and like that's all great and you just sit in that for at least maybe like five minutes or longer and as you do that every day the things that will resonate with that energy of abundance will start to be attracted and magnetized to you so you'll start to have experiences that have that same energy to it in a way or like a, maybe at least a portion of it so like you might get used to that energy of living in total abundance and then a person you meet shows up and you have a conversation and it, that person and you're talking to them and that conversation has that same energy in a sense to as that exercise you were doing. So you're like, oh, there, there it is. That's that abundance starting to show up. But like that person could be part of this me living in abundance, you know, as one of the relationships that shows up or it could be like a work situation or opportunity. And like, as you talk about it with someone or as you see the email or whatever it is, whatever way you get the opportunity, it has that flavor of that abundance to it. You're like, oh, so you can go that direction and choose it. And you know, those things are just going to start to show up and they could even be small things. Like you're, you go outside and you're excited about a project and you hear the birds chirping and it has that same abundant energy. So, you know, it can be about your experience and the energy of your life as well. So consider that as a way to manifest abundance. You know, one of the oldies but goodies, uh, gratitude journals, appreciation journals can be just like every night, every morning, every day, or just on your phone, just write down like maybe even at least three things that you appreciate from the day or five or just keep going for longer. And it gets you more in the energy of appreciation and gratitude. You're going to start to attract more great things your way, you know, and sometimes you might be really abundant and you don't realize it until you sit down and go through your appreciation journal. And it also like shifts your focus and shifts your focus potentially away from lack and into having, which can I'm not sure if I'm saying this totally correctly, but it can be a pretty big deal with uh, magnetizing abundance, depending on where you're at with it. So consider that. Another thing you can do is working on your receiving and being in the energy of receiving. This one's a bit more meta. It's a bit more energetic and it could even be its own topic maybe. However, this might be one where you look at like energy healing to get you into receiving or guided meditations or channel guided meditations that get you into receiving. And, you know, something that gets you aligned into receiving, into receiving, you might notice a lot more abundance and cool things showing up or people offering, you know, things like offering to take you to places, offering to get you things or just buying things for you and giving them to you. Like you might do an exercise for receiving and then you're you know, your partner might go out to the store and buy this thing you really wanted and all this food and these snacks for you. And then they're like really lovey-dovey with you or, you know, something like that. And you start to receive these things. Uh, and sometimes the energy of receiving is all you need to shift your abundance and start drawing it towards you. You know, if we're closed off regarding our receiving, sometimes it's a bit more difficult to <laughs> receive the abundance. So being in a in a healthily balanced receptive state or energy of receiving, again, can work pretty good wonders, especially if it's in an, in an aligned way. And you may even like look at intentions like you're manifesting every day. I receive what's for the highest good for me to receive. I receive what's meant for me. I receive what belongs with me and what's for me. Thank you so much. Or things like that to start to shift the energy too. Which brings me to another thing you can do, which is just like every day showing up and setting intentions for abundance in some way, whether it's like a, like a, uh, 
a mantra you're putting on every day is an intention to bring an abundance to you, or it's a meditation you're doing every day for abundance or an energy healing session you put on or some type of intention that you're putting out some way, or you're writing it down every day. Like something you're doing to move the energies every day is going to open doors for the highest good for you regarding abundance. And maybe the first thing you do, it, trust your intuition on it as well. Cause like maybe you're tempted to force something and it's not the right fit for you. However, even just like taking a step in the direction, it can allow the universe to redirect you and get you to the thing that is going to work for you. So feel free to try different things with this. However, it's going to, even if it takes time, like it could be right away, it could be something that just compounds over time and brings in more and more and more and more and more abundance over time. And maybe you do it for a month and then this little thing happens and you get a raise at work and then you do it for another two months and then you get the side income that comes online and then you do it for three more months and then you, you know, are able to quit your job because this side thing turned into a bigger business. And then six months later, you know, this other part of your business comes in and expands it. And then a year later you do this other thing. That's an investment that starts, you know, it can keep just moving the energies and bringing healing your way or whatever you need your way to keep expanding abundance. And maybe it's something you just keep doing the same thing, or maybe it shifts after a while and you're called to do different things around your abundance. However, it's something to consider is just that showing up every day and compounding the intention and moving mountains that way, I guess you could say. Then of course you can just directly approach healing your abundance with like energy healing, energy healing sessions, you could do a little energy healing session for your abundance and the abundance of your life every day, like write it down on a piece of paper and that's your like surrogate for the your, your life and the abundance of your life and you do an energy healing session for it or you could do it just for your financial circumstance. Like there's so many different things you can do to help you like heal around abundance, shift things around abundance and you might just have to use your intuition to find the things that work for you or just try different things and see what starts to to move things in your life. So that's, at least for this episode, I'm sure there's more we could delve into. That's a lot of what, if not just plain, what I was guided to bring through for this episode so far. I'm also going to facilitate a full channel mode session regarding abundance and abundance boosting. So we'll see, it might be about 15 minutes or so. You know, there's information about my spirit guides and the benefits of channel material in the description. So I'm just going to edit this audio and... I'm going to step out of the way, jump into full channel mode and see what comes through for you for my spirit guides directly regarding abundance, at least for this episode. <laughs> welcome, welcome abundant beings to this full channel mode session and give us one moment to work through this body and prepare for this channel more deeply. Abundance can be found in your soul and in your soul's desires and in what you are pre-programmed to do on this earth as far as what you find fulfilling, as far as what your soul missions are. So if you are confused regarding abundance right now in your world, double check in some way, whether it's a reader, some other form of checking in on your purpose this lifetime or your soul missions and see if you can uncover more information for yourself on what will fill you up and be fulfilling in that regard for abundance comes in many ways when a being is doing what they are supposed to be doing and being what they are supposed to be being we realize this might sound contrary to some of the advice that came through earlier in this episode. However, that is not necessarily the case. You can have both things be true where you have mm, certain desires, desires of your heart, desires of things you would like to be, mm, be bringing in, as well as uh, deeply planted by source soul missions that you came here to fulfill through your incarnation on earth. And you can have both, both a life you dream of and would like to have and a life where you are fulfilling the missions and purposes you incarnated for. One of which could simply be to enjoy your life. 
it does not always have to be a save the world uh, type of mentality or mission that your soul incarnates for. Sometimes it is to help a group of people. Sometimes it is to plant an energy on earth. Sometimes it is to shed light on things. It does not have to be what you think that it is. Or it does not have to be a mm, mission that would make sense to a human on the human mind level. For example, if you are here to bring peace to this planet, you might think, oh, I have to go start a meditation group. I have to go save the poor so they are more in peace. I have to go take away the burdens and stress of all the people uh, on the planet and suffer through it. No, no. You might actually just be called to start with yourself and create a life that is peaceful and let that be an example to others. And that will be fulfilling. For you living in peace is what you came here to do in that uh, circumstance. And sure, there might be lessons, mm, learnings you needed to realize that peace is what you craved or even realize what peace is for you on this planet and what that looks like for you. For it may not be a, a, a farm on the prairie where no one's around. Peace for you might be very active. It might entail exercise. It might entail going out and having cocktails with friends or if you are uh, under a legal <laughs> drinking age, some other form of uh, entertainment and conversation with friends. That might be where you find peace. It is simply peace within your circumstances, whatever... Um, works for you and your body and your soul regarding that this lifetime. Again, it is so easy for some to judge what it has to look like when the topic of soul missions are brought in. It does not have to look a particular way to anyone. For many of you, the missing key The missing ingredient, the thing you're running up against when it comes to abundance, is you are looking at what everyone else has and trying to make that fit what your abundance should be. When you should be going within and seeing what you are called to do and seeing what lights you up, even through the information gathered through your normal life on earth uh, regarding what has traditionally been something that lights you up and what has been something that shuts you off, uh, shuts down your enjoyment of life, uh, makes you bored, makes you feel more lifeless, makes you feel like you are not thriving. Even just that information uh, thus far can be a clue towards your enjoyment of your world and you living in a more abundant energy right there. For if art, for example, lights you up, however, you keep turning away from art to start even a podcast, uh, perhaps ironically is an example we could use because you think that's the way to be successful and have money and have abundance in your world, even though it takes you away from what you enjoy and uh, putting more time into that. You could actually be moving further away from your abundance uh, by trying to move towards a traditional idea or judgment of what abundance has to look like uh, for you. We could also use the concept of stability. Some people might feel more stable uh, living in a van on the road, living life freely, than being locked in a cage to their mind, metaphorically, in a nine to five office job, even if they are making more money in the office job. If that life is dull and gray to them, even though there may be some financial stability in a way with that, they may not feel as stable in that they may feel more imprisoned, which would not be as abundant a life as they could have. So do you see how by going based on others' ideas or society's ideas of what abundance is, you are potentially trapping yourself into a life you do not actually desire to live? Now, uh, going back to the previous example, if that's artist or art aficionado, if they were to turn away from the uh, podcast that they'd made, uh, 
Perhaps it was about business or something they thought would be successful and turn that attention to what mm, was something that lit them up. Uh, let's say art again and put more focus into that. That could open more avenues uh, to them if they're in a better energy where they are enthusiastic about their art and their life. That could open more doors to them, especially if their intuition guided them that way than the thing that they would think would make them successful that was not lighting them up. We realize this sounds counterintuitive to some of you. However, it is actually very intuitive. Uh, very often the path that Source will have for you that can be successful or that your intuition is guiding you down may look very different than what would traditionally be deemed as something that could be successful. And think of how fast the world is changing. Things that were traditionally successful or the path to success may not work as well any longer in the evolving world you find yourselves in. So to pigeon your whole yourself into the old ways of abundance or the old ways to abundance and thinking that is the way you have to go, you are missing the boat in some ways that your intuition might be leading you towards that could be the unorthodox or mm, pioneered way that would actually be successful for you. And each of your roads will be unique. You cannot always just copy and paste what someone else is doing and put it in place in your life and expect it to work in the same way for another. There may be a million different reasons that that thing worked for them, but it won't be the right fit for you, either at a soul level or even just in the physical, logical circumstances around that thing. So do your best not to see what someone else has and copy paste it into your life, thinking that will be your key. Do not look at what someone else says, uh, business coaches, yada yada, about what you have to do or have to not do. Everybody is different and your circumstances are different. By pigeonholing yourself into another's story or into your story having to look like theirs, you set yourself up for failure. When you could be having a great life that looks nothing like theirs. So what lights you up? What makes you feel abundant? What is abundance to you? That is our question. What have you already been shown is abundance to you that you have been neglecting in favor of someone else's story or judgment of abundance? or even your own judgments that weren't based in truth, but were based in something someone else said or uh, berated you for or punished you for, yada yada. We would like you to get back to you. But that is where abundance can be found. And that is where your path to abundance can be found. For starters, what is abundance for you? That is really our main message regarding a lot of this for this channel. For that is where many of you are at. You are at a place where you need to get back to you. And you need to get back to what's true for you. And you need to get your head unwrapped from all the techniques, all the different things uh, perhaps different people are saying, some of you. All the limited perspectives all the ways you're squeezing yourself into others' techniques for abundance, those ideas. Get back to what's working for you. Get back to simplicity. Get back to healing yourself to get to abundance. Rather than trying to trick the universe into giving it to you or mm, something weird like that. And some of you do do that. You think, oh, if I go say my affirmations and pretend I'm healed and say these specific sentences to these people uh, like this, even if oh, I have this glaring belief that is blocking money from coming my way, and I have all these beliefs about uh, how people should be treating me, but they're not, so I am a victim, 
and I'm not really willing to look at that or, or work on that. I'm just going to try to trick the universe into how uh, abundant mindset like I am and how my uh, brain is wired for abundance and all this stuff. You can't trick the universe for the universe is everything and the universe is you and the universe knows if you're ready for abundance or not or if it's the right time for you to have a certain aspect of abundance or if you're really even ready or in the place to receive it or hold that in your life, you cannot trick the universe with anything. It's a laughable notion. So you have to do the work. It does not have to be hard. It does not have to be difficult. It does not have to be you beating your head against the wall or praying in a monastery for eight hours a day, hoping for a miracle or what have you. But you have to authentically dig into this stuff if you'd like a change. No more surface level, tiny changes. No more trying to trick the universe for those of you doing that. No more trying to trick your friends into thinking you're abundant. So the universe will think you're abundant and give you nice things. What do you need to shift? What do you need to let into your world? Who do you need to become? Who are you that you're not allowing yourself to be that would already be or already is abundant? What aspect of yourself are you not letting play in the world that if you'd let it play in the world would attract abundance to you, such as an inner child aspect? Or are you so focused or hyper fixated on a business and how it's doing or how it's not doing that you forget the abundance of play in your world or the abundance of the relationships you have or the abundance of uh, enjoying a, a drink that you uh, like with a friend? Do you neglect the abundance and beauty all around you in nature or in other uh, facets? because you don't have that exact amount of money you'd like to have in your wallet right now. And we understand, we're not judging you for it. We're just getting you to reconsider. Where is abundance already finding you that you are neglecting it? When it's right there, waiting to be received. It could be a beautiful scene in nature. A beautiful conversation with a friend. A beautiful testimonial for your website from a client. A fun day at work with your coworkers. Where you have this life and it is precious. And if you will come back to that building block, that fundamental viewpoint, you have this incarnation. You have this one life as you are now at this incarnation. You have so many gifts around you that you can receive and appreciate. We realize some of you might be in suffering or might be going through difficult circumstances. So we're not trying to gaslight you and say, why aren't you enjoying your life, uh, silly uh, being going through something difficult? We're not judging you. But be open to that light in life again when you are ready. Because it is all around, waiting to be received. Be open to the support that could be abundant for you right now. When all seems lost, if that's you. Look for the light. The more you notice the abundance that's around you and the light around you and live in it, the, and the more it will be drawn to you, the more it will be attracted to you, the more you'll be creating a foundation of abundance to live on, and the more you'll see how abundance is already right there, waiting to be received, waiting to be built upon. Things can just become more and more and more abundant for you. 
So that is the energy of abundance from source we wish to leave you with. And as the doorway to abundance, uh, this channel has opened for the highest good. If you will receive it energetically within you and around you, you will have invitations to abundance, many of you, either right away or for a few days to a few weeks after you listen to this uh, channeled message. So notice when the universe is inviting you to abundance or giving you choices that could lead to abundance. Even if it is a hangout with friends, a fun time at the beach, a job opportunity, someone giving you money or a gift, and receive it. And say thanks for the abundance, universe. And ask for more. You are not being ungrateful if you ask for more. And the universe is not stingy. It is merely your beliefs that might make the universe appear stingy. Might be difficult to hear for some. But the universe is not stingy. It is infinitely abundant. And it will give all the time. Should you receive and should you be open for the eyes, good for it to do so. We realize we're grinding some of your gears. Where is that universe with the money it's supposed to give me? I can barely pay rent. We understand the hardship that can be like. Where can you open to abundance around you and around that? So you can open to the money coming in. And where can you let go of your beliefs that the universe is stingy? Or that you don't deserve it? Or that the universe will give it to anyone else but you? And if you are attacking us right now, we are laughing. You cannot hurt us. We are merely pointing yourself back to you so you can shift things, so you can have abundance. And attacking us is hilarious. Why don't you look at yourself first? You are only attacking us because we are hitting a wound. Even if you are just mentally mad at us. We are hitting a wound and we are hitting something you need to shift. And you may not want to let it go. And some of you might go, why wouldn't I want to let go of my limiting beliefs? Well, maybe you think it's keeping you safe from something. Someone judging you, someone attacking you. Maybe it's comfortable where you're at. You're afraid of the unknown or the shift that could happen and what might change if it does. Will your friends treat you differently if you have money? Will your family just be knocking at your door to take all your money if you have money? Well, do you have the backbone and the boundaries to be able to say no? That might be a question. And if so, you have nothing to worry about. If people genuinely cared about you, they probably would not see you as just a bank. And wouldn't you rather have people who genuinely cared about you around you? or who were able to do the work to be able to do so, even if they were triggered in some way, or mm, were triggered by the opportunity that you had money. So, abundance could unveil truth in some ways that could be uncomfortable, if you were to receive it and own it. However, it could also bring a lot of good could bring new people around you, new opportunities, new enjoyments of your experience. There's no right or wrong with any of this. No right or wrong with you. Just what you'd like to choose. We will leave you with that to munch on. Do not be afraid to fly high regarding abundance, to own your abundance to be an example of abundance, to live your life to the fullest, which is really what this is all about in some ways. You living the best life you can and the gift that is to the world in addition to you. And you matter enough that 
Shouldn't it be good enough to give yourself a good life? It does not have to be about everyone else when it comes to your world. It doesn't hurt to help others, and many of you came here to help others. At the same time, aren't you enough? And again, we will quantify it. It does not mean stepping on other people's faces to get to a certain place or a place you want to go. So take it in a balanced way. However, abundance is really about living your life to the fullest while you're here. We will leave you there. We have done more than enough for this channel. We have given you things to munch on, to consider, and we wish you abundance and hope in this world. No matter the economic circumstances, you can be abundance. Never withhold the possibility from yourself. You might not realize the resources Source has at hand to bring you abundance or a better world for you. So receive. I know you are worthy of that. We're wishing you well. We're wishing you joy. We're wishing you what abundance is for you. And we will see you in a future channel. Signing out for now, the Angelic Collective of Zorbital and Source. Farewell. So I hope that was helpful, did whatever was for your highest good, got some things to land for you, shifted some things energetically in a way that was for your highest good. And you can always re-listen if you'd like to go deeper into that energy. These episodes are meant to be re-listened to, and it's free, so <laughs> not too hard to jump onto a podcast episode and listen to something if you'd like an abundance boost or to get a refresher on a topic or anything like that. If you'd ever like to go further with my work, there have been some channels and channel guided meditations that have come through for the Let's Go Higher membership, which you can find on my website. And for example, just last month, the channel guided meditation for the gold level of the membership was Abundance Boost, channel guided meditation, pretty self-explanatory. And there was a full channel mode session on money abundance as well that came through last month. So there are some recent resources geared specifically towards abundance. If that calls to you at all and you'd like to get some resources on that topic, go a bit deeper perhaps. I did mention it earlier in the podcast, however, and there's no affiliation here, Lee Harris, LeeHarrisEnergy.com does have a course on abundance that I really liked and have gone through. And if you feel called to that, you can find that on his website or maybe you can Google it or find it somehow. However, I do recommend that one if you're looking to increase your abundance in life in any area. I highly recommend it. And you know, pay attention to the resources that show up around abundance after this as well, because you might be attracting them, magnetizing them as a route to abundance that source is bringing you as a result of you clicking on this, listening to the full channel mode session, inviting in abundance through clicking on this and going through this. And I really hoped all of this helped and did whatever was for your highest good and opened you to some ideas that would help you get to abundance shifted you so that you will allow abundance and magnetize it in or just otherwise did whatever is for your highest good around the topic. So again, you can find more offerings from me on brandonhbloom.com. That'll be linked in the description. If anything else calls to you, you know, I have one-on-one -on -one channeled intuitive readings I'm currently doing, one-on-one -on -one channeled and intuitive mentoring I'm doing, as well as other energy healing classes. We talked about the Let's Go Higher membership, other channeled MP3s, et cetera. You can find it all 
on my website. And if you'd like to keep up to date on new episodes with this podcast, you can join my free newsletter, which will also be in the description and you'll get updates whenever a new episode drops. Should be every other week as of right now. And I'm looking at every other Wednesday as the day these will launch, just if you were, you know, wondering about that. And finally, I realize every podcaster and their mom probably (laughs) says this in their episodes. However, rating this podcast, you know, and leaving a review really does help with the algorithm, with this show finding its wings and finding the people it's meant to find and expanding and growing. Or if you're listening to this on YouTube, of course, the like and the the subscribe and the any engagement you give is great for any creator you like or whose work really helps you out, especially if you find something helpful in it. And, you know, no pressure on that. Just going to put that reminder there that that is a way to help me and this show out if it helped you and you got something and hopefully not just something, but a lot of things for the highest good (laughs) out of it. So I'm wishing you well. You have a great rest of your day or evening and I'll see you on another episode or a piece of content, or other thing, hopefully, sometime in the future. And may what's for the highest good to occur, occur. For the highest good of all, each respectively. Yeah.